What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today's video, we're talking about the best finesse technique you've probably never seen or heard of. We're talking about the spiral bait. This guy right here has caught more big fish for me uh, sight fish, like visibly seeing the fish swimming than any other light line technique, finesse technique uh, through the years. This guy right here is the Robo Worm Sculpin, but it's not the worm, it's the technique, okay? I call it the spiral bait. Been fishing it that way for 15, 16 years. Um, it's all about the fall. The reason we call it the spiral bait, you fish it on slack line, you throw it out there, four, five, six pound test, and you flip it out there, you lead the fish that you see, and this thing, because of the weight forward system in it, it does the death spiral. That is why we call it the spiral bait. I had a guy recently ask me about hover strolling. And he started to describe it and I just, my, my face just lit up because I'm glad there's finally an official name for it. Um, like I said, going back 15, 16 years fishing those ultra clear Highland reservoirs, uh, pre-spawn all the way into summer when you could see those fish suspended under boat marinas or floating campsites. I don't know if that's a thing out, out east yet, but out west it was, floating bathrooms. You know, you'd pull up to a, a floating bathroom that's over 250 feet of water. You'd throw this bait right here. I'm gonna go over rigging and baits and everything in just a second, but you'd throw that thing up there and you just let it fall on slack line, typically braid to leader, and you're watching your line, and this thing is just slowly falling. The slower, the better, but you, you have to make sure that it's just not diving straight down. It's doing that big death spiral like a dying bait fish. And you're watching your bait, you're watching your line, down, 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 sometimes 30 feet. And then, doop, your line would jump. You reel down, feel the pressure, load up, three and a half, four and a half, five pound spotted bass. It is an amazing ultra finesse presentation. And like I said, I'm finally glad there's a name for it. Hover strolling, I believe is the name they're calling it out of Japan. I saw a few other guys when I Googled, it, I saw a few other guys have, have taught this technique. So it's pretty cool to be ahead of the game on that. Um, but I'm, I'm still going to call it the spiral bait because it's all about that death spiral. I mean, going back way back when, even on Clear Lake, you know, we're catching six and seven pound cruising fish on this big large mouth on this finesse technique. Pre-spawn, like I said, all the way up through summer, when you see those big fish just spin it up under a dock, five or six fish just spin under a dock, you can't get them to eat anything. They're just sunning themselves. And you skip this little bait up there and you let it fall and fall and fall. And all of a sudden you'll see one of those big subs just go down and you see that thunk on your line. You reel it up and the war is on with that light rod, light line. So kind of talked about this bait right here. That is the Robo Worm Sculpin. The reason this bait really uh, stood out to me in the beginning is this, basically this big kind of dorsal fin that it had on it. And if you, this technique is ultra finesse. So it's all about having the weight forward in the head of the bait. And then with this specific worm, it has that big dorsal fin. So I could kind of twist it and really change how that bait fell. Again, if, it, if you're just throwing a, a light finesse bait out there where it just dives down like an ultralight shaky head, it's nothing special. But when you get this thing to glide and do that big dying bait fish death spiral, that's where those fish, no joke, I've seen fish from 50 feet away lead that fish from 50 feet away they swim over to it, just suck it in. It is awesome. So let's talk about some of my favorite baits. There are some new uh, ways to rig. I want you guys to see this bag right here. So back when, there was probably three or four guys that I know of uh, out west that were, that were doing this technique. Um, 
and I was fortunate to be one of them. So we had a buddy that would, he took a Dremel and basically took a do-it mold and he'd make us thir one 32nd ounce heads. Basically you take a, back then we would take a 90 degree hook, jig hook, and he would Dremel out and make us an eighth or a 16th or a 32nd or a 64th ounce, a little bit of uh, lead on there, and then we would rig our baits. And depending on the depth, how slow we wanted that bait to fall, depended on the weight that we'd actually use. So then got, uh, had a buddy make a ton of them for us. I'll show you. It's my 32nd ounce bag, okay? Look at these little guys right here. So again, 90 degree hook, see that 90 degree line tie? That is important. Again, you want that weight forward, okay? That is how you get your favorite bait fish or four inch worm to do that death spiral, okay? So how I was rigging it, we're gonna go, uh, uh, there's some new, some new products on the market that do a really good job. Um, couple ways to rig it. And again, you're gonna have to play around with this in your local clear water, in your, in your bathtub, in your pool, uh, at the local fishery, if it's clear enough. It's all about tweaking that bait because there is a right and a wrong way to rig it and, and you're gonna have to adjust your bait to get that awesome spiral bait. That's why I called it the spiral bait. Like I said, the death spiral. When you catch a shad or you're, fi you're fighting a fish and you see it spit up a, a shad that had eaten or a baby bluegirl or something, as that thing falls to the bottom, it's that real methodical kind of just glide, do nothing, non-intrusive fall, right? And those fish just have not seen it. So when you see those big fish cruising, again, right now, late summer, sometimes it is hard to get a bite, but you pull up to a dock or you pull up to an area where you know there's fish, it doesn't even have to be clear water right now. As long as it's clear-ish water, you skip this bait up to there, that dock, and you let that fall on slack line, and you're just watching your line. Slack line's important, because again, you're using a 30 seconds ounce tungsten weight. I mean, tiny weight, tiny head. You want this thing to fall as subtle and as slow as possible. So slack line, and you let that thing do its magic, okay? Nine times out of 10, you're gonna get hit on that initial fall. You're gonna feel the dunk, or you're gonna see your line jump. Reel down, set the hook. Sometimes, if you let it go all the way down, so that, say that dock's in 15 foot, you can pop it up and let it come back down, okay? So I've had fish, or I see them cruising up shallows, maybe I'm frog fishing, or I mean, this is an awesome follow-up bait. So maybe I'm frog fishing or I'm top water fishing, but I can visibly see, maybe I'm only in three feet of water, four feet of water, but I could see there's a nice grass patch, there's a nice grass patch, there's a bass swimming between. If I take this bait, fire it out there, again, you don't wanna make a real loud splash, you want it to be as subtle and as finessey as possible. Let that thing fall and it starts doing its thing you can watch, even though you're not bed fishing, you're still sight fishing, right? You're using your polarized sunglasses. You're sight fishing. You see that that fish is swimming over and now your bait hit, hit bottom. They'll sit there and look at it. You pop it up and then let it do that fall again. They just ease over and just suck it up. It is the coolest thing. So let's talk about the different ways to rig it. So I kind of showed you how I was doing it back in the day. Had these custom weighted heads and uh, we'll link all these, these things down below in the video description. The other way to do it, is you take your favorite 90 degree jig hook. This bait right here is another one. I won so much money throwing this guy right here, this specific bait. This is a Yamamoto four inch Senko. Okay, this bait has some weight to it. So again, if you're a clear water, Highland Reservoir guy, Lowland Reservoir guy with big spotted bass, and you like to fish marinas or docks, or you are a fisherman that has shad in your fishery, you need to throw this setup right here. Okay, so four inch. Yamamoto Senko, this is called natural shad, that color right there. Electric shad would be good too. It didn't exist when we were doing this back then. My two favorite colors back then 
natural shad, and baby bass. A little key tip with the baby bass. You guys like to throw a baby bass Senko? Take the last half inch or so with a black Sharpie and color the tail black. Any of those small bass you see swimming around in the springtime, they all have that real bright uh, black tipped tail. So little tip for you on that. But just like any Senko, spin it and see where that natural kind of curve is, okay? Then you come into the bait about an eighth of an inch. You don't come through the head like normal. You come through the bait about an eighth of an inch, okay? Just like that. Again, we're gonna show you multiple ways to rig this thing, but it all is going to fish the same, okay? So we have this. We're gonna pull this forward. Boom. You see that right there? Okay. Now, Rain's Tackle has some awesome tungsten uh, weights, wacky rig weights, okay? They call them Nico rig weights, uh, whatever. It's just your, they make them in lead too, but I like tungsten because they are a lot smaller. They make them all the way down to 196th of an ounce. I typically like a 130 seconds, especially on the Senko because it has some body to it. It's got some mass. I mean, I could take this bait right here on a bait caster and throw it. It's got a little bit of weight. So now that we have our bait rigged, we take this, we put it right in the head. Okay. Now you guys have probably all thrown a wacky rig Senko where it's really important to make sure that your O-ring or whatever you're using is in the middle of that bait so that that bait falls symmetrically and even. This is the complete opposite. You want this thing, thing to be a little bit heavier in the nose of the bait. And that's what gets that thing. So once it hits the water, it kind of planes out and then starts doing the, the death spiral, okay? That guy right there. That has caught so many big fish for me uh, in clear water. Lake Shasta, Lake Oroville, Bullard's Bar, you know, all those awesome ultra clear fisheries out west. Dale Hollow out here. Uh, some really cool fish for me have been caught on this. I remember when I first started playing around with this, I think I, I think I caught seven of the first 10 fish that I visibly saw when I was up shallow fishing and I saw those and I was playing around. I originally, where's it at? I originally started with this guy right here, okay? It's a 30 seconds ounce, 132nd ounce Gamakatsu round bend and I would just bury that in that Robo Worm Sculpin. And uh, where'd it go? This guy right here. First six or seven fish out of 10 uh, I got to eat and got them to the boat. I mean, now it's a war, right? When you hook this fish on six, five, six, seven pound test on clear, I was actually using eight, um, a little bit heavier line gets that thing to fall a little bit slower, which is, which is awesome. But, uh, 70% of the first 10 fish, I was like, this is awesome. I told Matt about it, kind of showed him and, and his light bulb went off because he really started playing around with it, uh, in, in clear water for smallmouth, throw in like your little craw baits and stuff. You know, getting that weight forward and creating that glide and getting that bait to do that spiral, it works on your your crawdad imitating baits too, your little beavers, little crawfish stuff. But uh, so this guy right here worked magic for me. Again, that is that Robo Worm Sculpin. Hopefully, you guys can see it has that big kind of um, ribbed dorsal fin on the back. And so I got to really kind of, I would twist it a little bit and play around with it to see how tight and how wide of a spiral I could get. But uh, anyways, that guy right there, that's the one that really kicked it off. And then fishing those tournaments and fun fishing out there on those Highland Reservoirs, that's when I really dialed it in with the Senko. The Senko you can cast a lot farther because the Senko has a lot of weight, uh, a lot of salt in it. It's got natural weight to it. But again, just putting that little bit of weight in the head gets that thing to spiral, okay? Another cool bait that this thing works on 
is your little fluke style baits, okay? I have probably inworms. I use three. I keep it really simple. I use that sculpin like I was talking about. Here it is in, uh, this is not, this was this hologram shad. Again, it's a really ultra finesse presentation. So I like to mimic big fish, right? So hologram shad is a great one. Again, robo worm sculpin. I was super bummed when this, when they basically discontinued this worm, but they brought it back. So you can still get them now. That, the four inch Senko, again, natural shad, electric shad, any of your shad or your bait fish colors and baby bass were key for me. And then now I've been playing around with it uh, with that four inch magic worm. That guy right here works really well. I like the worms that kind of have a flat bottom. Again, that helps that bait plane out. If you're using using a traditional, just a round worm, you know, like a Senko, it doesn't plane out as easily as a bait with a flat belly, okay? And then the, uh, the Z-Man, the Jerk Shads, that is a, a Laztec bait. I just showed you guys one. It's an Elastec bait, right? It's high float. So this thing fl falls so slow. You can actually put in, you can go up to like a 16th ounce head if you wanted. Um, but I want to show you guys real quick, talk about baits. Little craws, like that little Reigns bubble craw or the Z-Man, that guy right there. TRD Bugs fantastic baits for this technique. So it doesn't matter if you're a smallmouth fisherman, spotted bass fisherman, largemouth fisherman, one of those worms uh, will catch fish for you. Now, this guy right here, this is actually made by Core Tackle. It's a cool, cool version of this guy, right? But they actually put weight in, a lot more weight in front of the hook and uh, I think that helps kind of keep the uh, keep the worm on the, the head of the hook. So I actually get rid of the wire keeper. I'm not trying to fish this around grass or, or wood or anything like that. If I get hung up with my six pound test, I'm probably gonna break off. So I actually, I take that thing and I go back and forth until it comes out. So how you rig this guy, let's just go ahead and do it in a, in a fluke for you. So again, just like I showed you before, you come about an eighth of an inch on the top of the bait. You don't come through the face, come through the top. Come down like you normally would Texas rig your bait, pop it through, pull this down, and then lift your nose of the bait over okay just like that again here's that jerk shads you can do it with a uh pop this hook out and try it on a, on a worm real quick i'll show you on a that magic worm but again if you don't want to like i said core tackle has this guy right here if you just want to take your favorite 90 degree jig hook probably like a size one Size two, one odd if you're going a little bit bigger baits. And uh, what's nice about the magic worm, it's really easy. Because this back is ribbed, I just come in that first rib, come in right there, come straight back again. You have to play with how this worm is twisted on the shank of the hook. All of it's gonna play going to affect how that worm falls and glides down, okay? So again, come out right through there. Slide the worm on the hook of the shank, on the shank of the hook. Pull this on, and then you're going to take the head of the worm and pull it back over. Try and do this for you. Back over that front point of the hook okay like so you see that so again that 90 degree line tie is really really important okay so you have the that keeper kind of 
point in the in the face of the bait. So on that four inch magic worm, start at that first that first rib and come out the second one before the uh, before the back. That'll really help you guys on that. But see how that has a flat belly. So when I fire this thing out, again here's that sculpin. This thing skips really well as well. Fire that thing out. I'm watching my connection knot. I'm not moving my rod tip at all. I'm letting this thing fall. You know, it's probably only falling three feet, four feet by now. It is so slow. Obviously, if you put a little bit heavier weight in there, you can play around with that. Still falling. Okay, I'm on bottom. Reel up, check it, nothing. I'll kind of pull it up, pop it, same thing. Let that thing fall. Again, this is not a bait that you're going to cover a lot of water with. This is a bait that I always have rigged pre-spawn through basically the fall. Anytime that um, I might be fishing clear water docks, I might be fishing lay downs, I might be up shallow fishing a frog. This is this is one of those baits that I have in all of those scenarios, but it is, it is not a bait that you're gonna fish and fish and fish and fish. It's, you look down a dock line or you look down a shoreline and there's a break with a big lay down, you're like, hmm, I bet there's fish suspended in that. You throw your shower blows or you throw your top water, whatever it may be, and you pick that guy up, fire it in there, and just let it fall. It is going to tempt some of the most finicky bass to eating that lure right there. Guys, the spiral bait, also known as hover strolling. Uh, the Japanese, they are so good at finding those little tiny uh, nuances, you know, those dif those different, those special techniques. And uh, I'm proud to say that, that uh, been doing this for over a decade and it I can vouch for it. it really really works you know it's one of those things most of the time you hear about a technique you're like huh why didn't I think about that but this is one of those ones where when I got it explained to me what it was called like I said this the smile my face just lit up because I can vouch for it I've been doing it a long time Matt can vouch for it he has caught some uh, finicky finicky small mouth that he has chased down for a long ways and put one of these baits out in front of him using this technique and uh, caught some of the biggest small mouth of his life doing it um the guys back out west you if you're watching this you know who you are that we're doing that making the making the heads and the and the the hooks for me um it was uh we caught a lot of big fish, won a lot of money doing this out west a long time ago. But there it is, guys, the hover strolling technique, also known as the spiral bait. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Uh, I will try to get to those as soon as possible. I will link my favorite worms and baits and uh, all the goodies that you will need to, uh, to, uh, to make this technique work for you. It has a time and a place in the boat. For me, like I said, it is through spring, through, through, there's a snake over there swimming in the water. Spring through summer into the fall. Um, you know, some of the biggest fish I've ever caught on it. You know, you ever have those docks where you pull up and you see like 25 to 40 pounds just suspended underneath it. And uh, this bait, has caught more of those big fish for me than any other uh, technique. So guys, like I said, super excited to share this with you. I didn't know there was an official name for it, um, but now there is. If you guys have any questions, like I said, leave those down below in the comment section. I'll try to get those as soon as possible. If you learned something from this video or you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys on the next video.